Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our F-15C Eagle and we're looking at takeoff and landing. So if we deal with the takeoff first, so first of all the power that we're going to be using. So if we're lightly loaded, say full fuel and just very light stores, uh, then we have the option of either taking off at full mill power or we can go full power with the afterburners. Uh, if we were heavily loaded with, say, full missiles and fuel tanks, then we're really going to want full power, otherwise we're going to struggle. Now, as for the dangers, assuming that there is no major crosswind, then we've only got two dangers to worry about in the F-15. One is blowing out our tyres, which are very sensitive, because it's quite a heavy plane and whatnot, uh, they're very sensitive to being rolled too fast. So to cure that, we're just going to make sure that we rotate before 150 knots. So I always say rotate between 140 and 150 knots to take the stress off the tyres, and then even if you're really, really heavily loaded, and the plane rolls along the runway until about 200 knots before it takes off. The, the stress is off the tyres and you won't have tyre problems. Uh, the second is tail strike. It's got a big booty on it and um, it sticks out over the wheels quite a lot. And so the key uh, with that is to just watch your rotation. So when we rotate, in fact let's talk about the rotation now. When we rotate we hit 140 knots. Um, we're going to pull back on the aft stick up to about 10 or just below 10 degrees of pitch. At that point, we're just going to hold that. We're not going to exceed 10 degrees of pitch. We're going to hold it, and the plane will take off when it's ready to take off. Uh, and a general point about rotation, it's very tempting. If the plane is, if you rotate it up to 10 degrees, or whatever specified for your plane, and it's not the plane's not leaving the ground, it's very tempting to pull back on the stick. It's very natural to pull back on the stick. A lot of new guys do it. In fact, even some of the Reapers still do it, which drives me absolutely nuts. Um, uh, uh, in the hope that it's going to take off. You know, pulling back even further is not going to help. It's just going to put more drag um, on the plane and um, increase the chances of a tail strike. So really, it is just stick to, stick to the procedure, rotate to 10 degrees, and just wait until the plane takes off. Even if it's really, really heavily loaded, it will still eventually take off before the end of the runway, and you'll be absolutely fine. Right, so the procedure is we're going to hold our wheel brakes on. We're going to spool up to mill power. And then we're going to, because I'm lightly loaded, I've got full fuel and no stores, I'm just going to stick at mill power just to really exaggerate um, the idea of rotating and then waiting. Um, and then uh, I'm going to rotate to 10 at 140 knots up to about 10 degrees, hold it, and, um, and it'll take off when it's ready to take off. And um, just be careful not to pitch up still. Even these days, I see some of my guys immediately pitching up and almost stalling the plane. You know, just be patient with it. That's all you've got to do. That's a big, heavy plane. Um, flaps are automatic in the F-15. As long as you don't touch them, don't press the F key, they'll be automatic. So they'll put themselves down below 250 knots, and above 250 knots, they'll put themselves up. So in an F-15C, never, ever touch the flaps, and you'll be absolutely fine. You've got an indicator down here. I pressed left, alt, and C to get this cursor up. Uh, that the flaps are down. Um, regards the gear, um, essentially as soon as I leave the runway and I've got a decent vertical velocity, then it's safe to put the gear up. The gear indicator uh, lights are here. Okay, so let's get on with it. Brakes on, spool to mill power, it's about 90 odd percent. Whoops, and release brake and off we go. I'm going to zoom in just for your benefit so you can see the HUD a bit better. 100 knots, 110, 120, 130, 140, rotate, look for about 10 degrees, there we go, and she'll take off when she's ready to take off, still rolling, still rolling, still rolling, and she's up, gear up, let the flaps go up when they're ready to go up on their own, and we're up, super easy, if any doubt, put afterburners on, afterburners make any, any takeoff basically much easier and much safer. Right, <clears throat> we're going to perform a left hand circuit now, 1000 feet, 300 knots, and I shall check in with you when we're down at the end of the downwind. Okay, so we're reaching the end of the downwind. And I should say, I mean, this is how we're always going to land. If you've got visual, visual conditions on the runway, then you're always going to land in a circuit, whether it be left hand or right hand. If you need some help with the circuits, then search our educational general section for our basic aircraft uh, circuit tutorial. Uh, so what we're going to do now is extend about a mile, a mile and a half, then turn left into our final. Um, we're going to use that turn, so you'll always be doing it, unless it's an IFR landing, we're going to be doing a le uh, always going to be doing a turn before we get on finals. And we're going to use that turn as an opportunity um, to induce some drag and um, 
uh, reduce our speed from 300 knot circuit down to uh, just over 150 knots so we're not there's no need to ever use the air brake or anything we're just going to use aerodynamic braking and that's what should we should be doing uh, so we're going to do that get on a final and then report back okay so let's turn in now leave the throttle where it is the drag of the turn will um, reduce our speed down for us Oops, and I've come up early. I seem to be doing that at the moment. <clears throat> um, we're going to get on a standard um, three degree descent, heading straight for the runway. And we want to work our way down to about 150 knots. So we're going to come pretty much almost completely off the gas at the moment. And um, let me just get that lined up. What we're going to do is we're going to get the path vector. Uh, which is that of there, a circle, sorry, hands off the joystick. And we're going to line it up with the threshold of the runway. So let's get that there. Holding about, I don't know, 15 degrees of a uh, AOA. 20 degrees by the looks of it, actually. God, it's a heavy plane, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> and let's talk about the approach speed. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful with, with approach speed. So in the manual, it says something like 130, 135 knots or something like that. Bear in mind that when they say that, they mean... Uh, uh, on an RTB spec aircraft, i.e. an aircraft with no stores or very low stores and low fuel, i.e. very light aircraft. Uh, the aircraft that we are, you'll often have in DCS because you, you, you rarely burn all of your fuel off is going to be probably quite a heavy plane generally when you're landing or practicing landing. That means you can't land at that, uh, uh, that basic 130 knot spec. You've got to increase your speed depending on your payload. So <clears throat> what I say is I never go below 150. So even if it's a super light plane, stick to 150. It's a very safe landing speed. If you're heavily loaded, i.e. you've got full gas like we are today, but and you've got heavy stores, then you're going to ramp that up to, all the way up to 200, possibly even slightly above 200. Uh, I see loads of people, um, even in our group sometimes, uh, um, not realising how heavy their plane is, and this is something that has to be done in all planes, um, realising how heavy their plane is, they go to their normal basic landing speed that they've read out of their manual, and they just stall and crash, because they haven't added the extra um, speed that they need for the weight of their aircraft. So we're on a medium weight aircraft now, or relatively light actually, we've got full gas, but no stores, so we can go in at 150 or, or a touch uh, above 150 just for safety. We're at 170 at the moment, and you see we've got an angle of attack of 20, which is actually quite a high angle of attack, so I may need to put on a little bit of gas, um, we'll just see if it settles. Flaps will go down automatically, gear we'll put down now because we're on the final. We're going to aim to... Uh, aim the path vector of our aircraft right at the very, very end of the runway and then as we approach we're about 50 feet in the runway we're going to feather back stick and we'll land roughly where the tyre marks are there um, uh, not really much else to say apart, apart from just keep it very smooth you don't want to splam those tyres into the ground so as you get closer to the runway you want to reduce your sink rate as much as possible so that the impact is as less as possible and you're as kind as you can as the aircraft once we touch down, uh, this is not essential, but it's something you can do. You can keep your nose up in the air for something called aerodynamic braking. In fact, why don't we try that? Um, and it's just a way of braking without using your brakes. It doesn't put any wear on the brakes. Uh, if you can't do that, then just basically pump the wheel brakes all the way down the runway to slow down. Also, once you've touched the runway, it's probably a good time to put your air brake out there just for extra drag, basically. Um, but I wouldn't advise it using it on the final here. Okay, so let's unpause and off we go. Gear down is the first thing we're going to do. We'll check the indicators in a second. I can't see the uh, speed very well against the sky. I think we're about 160 there. So she's feeling quite heavy at the moment, so I'm not going to go below 160. She seems a bit, she seems happier there. And uh, like I said before, definitely don't go below, below 150. You're just making the job hard of yourself. Right, we're into the runway here. We're going to start the feather now. And we're going to cut the uh, gas. Shaking a bit, but that's fine. And just float her down. Basically, stall her down to the runway at the last minute. Right, I said I was going to do a... Uh, I drag pass. So we're going to keep our nose up at about 13 degrees here, which is about the maximum we want to go for without risking a tail strike. And we're just going to keep it up, pulling back stick all the way. It's going to be aerodynamically braking and down. It's run out of aero no, to keep it up. And I put my air brake up now. And we can start pumping the brakes a little now. That's it, really. So key points um, t uh, rotate at 140 to 150. Thank you. 
don't um, don't pull any more than about 10 degrees risk of tail strike on the landing don't go below 150 the, i know the aircraft can go below 150 knots but you're just going to be stressing yourself out with that uh, hold your nose high if you want to when you're about to sink into the runway feather nicely and then stall it into the runway for the last three few feet and either pump the wheel brakes to stop or um, a combination of that and keeping the nose up uh, right i that's all i've got to say on that really i hope that helps and I'll see you later